So now we're going to add and subtract rational expressions when the denominators are different. All right, so our first example is 4x over x minus 2 minus 3x over x minus 3. Now just like we would add and subtract fractions without all the variables running around, uh, we need to get a common denominator. Uh, in order to get a common denominator, first want to make sure that uh, you factor, completely factor, all your denominators. Well, in this case, you just have x minus 2 and x minus 3. They're already factored. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, so what we're going to do is figure out what the least common denominator will be. So over here on the right, I'm going to write LCD for least common denominator. All right, so we say, all right, how many different factors do we have from all of our denominators here? <clears throat> well, here we have an x minus 2, here we have an x minus 3. Those are two different factors. Uh, to, fill the, to figure out the least common denominator, we need both of those factors, and it's both of those factors multiplied together that will give us the least common denominator. Now, I do not encourage you to multiply those out uh, and get x squared minus 5x plus 6. It's actually easier if we leave it as x minus 2 times x minus 3. Leave them factored. Uh, Alright, so now once we figure out, alright, this is our LCD. So go over here to our uh, each of our individual fractions. We say, okay, here is the first fraction. The denominator is x minus 2. We would like that denominator to be x minus 2 times x minus 3. So what do we need to multiply this denominator by to make it look like the LCD? Well, we need to multiply it by x minus 3. So we come down on the next line. Uh, 4x over x minus 2. And now we're going to multiply the top and bottom uh, by x minus 3. Now, why are we multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by x minus 3? Well, we need to get an x minus 3 times that x minus 2 in the bottom, so that's the reason why we're doing it. Uh, we have to multiply the top by the same thing, x minus 3, because this thing right here is just a fancy version of the number 1. x minus 3 over x minus 3 is just 1. And we all know that 1 times anything doesn't change its value. So we're just going to rewrite this so it looks a little different. All right, but that's why you have to multiply it to the top and the bottom. All right, then we've got a minus sign. So, all right, we got this fraction, 3x over x minus 3. Now we say, what's missing in this denominator? Uh, well, we're missing an x minus 2. So we need to multiply this denominator by x minus 2, which means we also need to multiply the numerator by x minus 2. And there again, that's a fancy 1 that we're multiplying the second fraction by. All right, so on the next line, We'll jump down and have 4x times x minus 3 divided by our LCD. And I would just leave the LCD written as x minus 2 times x minus 3. You could multiply it out, but it's just more work in the end because we're going to want it factored later anyway. Okay, then we have minus, and here we have 3x times x minus 2 divided by our LCD again. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is so we can see exactly what's in each numerator. All right, now we've got the denominators to be exactly the same. x minus 2 times x minus 3 is the same thing as x minus 3 times x minus 2. So now we can say this numerator minus this numerator all over our 1 LCD. So now in the next line, we'll have it as 4x times x minus 3 minus 3x times x minus 2 all over our LCD. Now, you could have multiplied those things out on the top. I tend to wait so as not to miss distributing the negative sign because it's very easy to make errors with the, uh, with the negative sign. All right, so now we've got our one fraction. And so distribute and simplify up on the numerator. So we have 4x squared minus 12x minus 3x squared plus 6x. Everybody see how that happened? All right, again, all over the same LCD, x minus 2, x minus 3. All right. 
right, so now, what do we get? Uh, 4x squared minus 3x squared, so that's just going to go to x squared. Negative 12x plus 6x goes to, everybody agree, goes to negative 6x. All divided by x minus 2, whoops, x minus 2, x minus 3, or um, x minus 3. All right, now, here's why we left the denominator factored. Because at this stage, we want to see if the fraction reduces. In order to do that, we have to f completely factor both the numerator and the denominator. So the denominator is already factored, so that's just one less thing we have to do. So the numerator we see factors into, I'm just going to go over here, factors into x times x minus 6. Actually, you can take out the, else, take out the uh, greatest common factor. All divided by x minus 2 and x minus 3. And we look to see if there are any factors that are common to both the numerator and the denominator. And we can see that there are none. And so this is just, uh, this is just as far as we need to go. It does not reduce down anymore. If we would have known that ahead of time, this over here would have been fine. Um, but I think it's always a good idea to make sure you factor everything just to see if uh, we can uh, reduce that fraction. Please let me know if you have any questions.